Welcome ladies and gentlemen to the Shadow Priest Guide for 3.3.5 Wrath of the Lich King. I hope you are doing fine on this beautiful day and that you are ready to learn something about Shadow Priests. We will take a look at the basics, Tink Talons trees, stat spreading and glyphs. Then we will take a look at some of the mandatory macros that will help us in our DPS rotation. After we've looked at that we'll dive right into the utility that Shadow Priests can provide and trust me it is quite a bit indeed. Before we do the exam we will talk about some tips and tricks. The exam will basically give you a quick perfect scenario DPS rotation. Now of course before we hop into the information I need to point out that sometimes you might not find yourself in the perfect scenario. Whether it be that you do not have heroism or if you are geared for endgame raids you might not always be hit capped especially in 10 man raids. Also I am making this guide with considerably limited experience in Shadow Priests compared to other classes and ignorance is not bliss on the internet as a content creator and that is why I will always say if you see something that I missed out let me and the rest of the world know in the comment section down below. Okay now that that is out of the way let's look at some of the stats that we want. We should prioritize hit rating of course this goes without saying and it is pretty much universal when gearing any kind of DPS. If you can not hit your target you are not doing damage. We need 17% hit rating. We get 3% from our talent Shadow Focus and 3% from another talent called Misery. Including our Draenei Racial which is another 1% we get a free 7% hit rating. As you can see I am over capped currently I need to replace my current offhand with Shadow Silk Spindle to fix this. Gearing towards best in slot gear helps give you a clear vision on what stats you need, how to get them and on how to work around them. This is where Atlas loot or simple rejamming can really help you find your next gearing step. After we cap hit rating we should get about 1200 haste rating, afterwards we can start stacking spell power. Just like usual when you start stacking spell power is when you will see the highest DPS increase per upgrade. There are still a few things to talk about when we are talking about the basics so next up is the talent tree. I use a little bit of a different talent tree than most people. I skip the mana talent focused mind and instead I take the terrified talent and the silence talent. There aren't many times when you are going to need either of these but besides in Ruby Sanctum 25 Heroic I have never ran out of mana even with lower gear. However, if you do feel like you need the extra mana or you just do not care about the silence and the terrify, feel free to take the mana. Another talent I personally skip is the threat reduction. This will be massively problematic on 10 mans, but as far as 25 mans go, you have a few more misdirects, few more tricks, I have never had any issues with aggro. And considering that Shadow Priests are often used as a threat magnet in Ruby Sanctum 25 Heroic, you might want to have a little bit more threat actually. That's it for the talents, but we still have the glyphs. Glyph of Mind Flay and Glyph of Shadow are absolutely mandatory major glyphs. The third slot can be used for either Mind Seer, this will give you more AoE damage because its range is longer and it is especially needed for Ruby Sanctum 25 Heroic. The other option would be to take the Glyph of Dispersion. This allows you to use Dispersion more often. I don't think this Glyph provides much value other than specific scenarios on for example Syndragosa. You will be able to disperse her Blistering Cold more often thus granting you a slight DPS increase in that fight. You could swap your glyphs for every specific fight but I do not think that provides enough and it for sure is not in your best monetary interest. As far as jamming goes you can ignore the plus 5 spell power socket bonuses. You do actually want to activate the plus 7 socket bonuses if you can fill it with a blue gem you have to go for the spell power and spirit gem. Because of the Glyph of Shadow and the Twisted Fate talent we get 50% spell power scaling from spirit. Nice. This gets even better with the improved spirit tab. This talent gives a 50% chance on Mind Flay Ticks and a 100% chance on Mind Blast to increase our total spirit by 10%. What this means is that if you have an item with a red and a blue socket you could either fill it with two red spell power gems. This would give you 46 spell power. However if you put one red spell power socket in and one blue spell power spirit gem and activate the plus 7 socket bonus then you would get 23 spell power from the red gem plus 12 from the blue gem and 7 from the socket bonus. But because of our spirit scaling that 10 spirit will give us 5 spell power or 5.5 spell power with the 10% bonus from improved spirit tap. This means that effectively we gain more spell power from jamming spirit. Alright that takes care of some of the basics in Shadow Priest. Now let's take a look at some of the more advanced information. Without any further ado let us jump right into the first chapter macros. 
there are a few macros that will improve your life drastically on a Shadow Priest. First off, we have the Mind Flame macro. The no channeling part in the Mind Flame macro means that if we are channeling a spell, this button will not activate. What this means is that we will get the full duration of a Mind Flame, even if we spam this button. And trust me, more on that later, never mind. The no channeling can and should be added to a separate Mind Seer macro as well. This will without a doubt increase your area of effect damage. Keep in mind though that if you cast a bad Mind Seer that you cannot just cast another by casting Mind Seer again. You will have to have some manual inputs to cancel the first channel to get to the next channel. That's what the macro does. The next macro we have is for Dispersion. Press the macro once, you enter Dispersion, press it twice and you cancel the Dispersion. I love using this because it allows me to disperse something that would kill me, like the blistering cold or the faster gut explosion at the absolute last possible nanosecond. And after that I instantly click it again to remove it and resume my DPS rotation. It has to be said that this macro has a obvious downside. If you are panicking and double press it by accident, you're fucked. You can also bind your engineering gloves or any similar effect to any of your damage spells, but since Shadow Priest has so few cooldowns, I just manually use them for maximum efficiency. That is all for the macros that I personally have, not that many today, but I guess you can say quality over quantity. Remember, if you have some, put them in the comments below. DPS Rotation Shadow Priests feel rather unique as a DPS in Wrath of the Lich King because of the reasons I will outline in the tips and tricks section. For now let us take a look at the basic DPS rotation or priority list or whatever the hell you want to call it. First off I have to explain this talent, Shadow Weaving. Your shadow spells have a 100% chance to increase the shadow damage you deal by 2% for 15 seconds. This stacks up to 5 times and it goes up to a total of 10% increased shadow damage. It is important to note that we will be constantly resetting our Shadow Word Pain automatically with our Pain and Suffering talent. What this means is that you do not want to reapply your Shadow Word Pain after having initially applied it properly. This phenomenon is known as Snap Casting. It is really prominent on a few classes and of course the most prominent one has to be Affliction Warlock on just about any expansion. I love the mechanic though, really solid. By using Snap Casting on our Shadow Word Pain, we can keep it at maximum damage throughout the entire fight. This might not seem like a big DPS increase at first glance, but trust me that you will want to do this. Alright, so as usual, make sure that you have all the buffs available to you. g bog proper Shaman Totems, make sure you're in range as well, your own buffs in Inner Fire and Vampiric Embrace. We start off by casting a Vampiric Touch, after this we immediately cast Devouring Plague. We follow this up by a single Mind Flay. Doing these 3 spells in rapid succession will give us 5 stacks of Shadow Weaving. Once the first Mind Flay has done all 3 of its sticks, we can apply our Shadow Word Pain and use all of our offensive cooldowns. These are Shadow Fiend and Inner Focus. Make sure you use Inner Focus on a Mind Flay. After the opening rotation we'll want to keep up our Vampiric Touch, Devouring Plague and spam Mind Flays. The priority in our spells go as followed. While we are not moving we want to cast Vampiric Touch, Devouring Plague, Mind Flay and when we are moving we'll want to cast Shadow Word Death first and after that reapply Devouring Plague until we can stand still again. This simple priority list does not keep a lot of things in mind. Like I always like to say, everything is relevant in Wrath of the Lich King. If you know your group is about to pop heroism, use your Shadow Fiend and it will get the 30% haste bonus. That is what I like to call free DPS that you have to try hard for. I'm going to say that the DPS from a Shadow Priest does not come from knowing what to press, it is knowing how to press it. More of that in our tips and tricks section though. For now we will look at the utility that you can provide to the raid. Utility. Now I bet you are expecting that Shadow Priests have a lot of utility and you would be right. After all, we are the priests and if we are not prepared to jump off a cliff, well then we just kinda suck. Luckily for us in Wotluck though, Glyph of Levitate exists. Take that classic. Sadly, the Glyph of Levitate does not have that much value in endgame raids, but our utility does not stop at Levitate, oh no sir. One of the best raid saving spells in the game has to be Divine Hymn. The amount of times that I have seen a near wipe getting pulled back from the brink of hell by a couple of these bad boys is, well, it happens often. 
And for mana, we also have a powerful tool. Well, it's not that powerful, but if we apply ourselves, we can find ways to make it better. The standard Hymn of Hope replenishes some mana to people with, uh, with the lowest percentage of mana. The second part of this spell is the important thing though. It's going to increase our maximum mana by 20%. If you combine this effect with a Divine Plea or a Mana Tide Totem, you can get some crazy mana regen going. And that really is the essence of raiding, isn't it? Working together to make it through our ordeals. A priest is a priest and a priest can heal. And healing is a lot of utility by itself. By using a few prayer of mendings or maybe a shield, you can save someone from some damage and, you know, it's good. There is another tool that we can heal with, Vampiric Embrace. Now this shit is just busted. If you are familiar with endgame raiding, I am sure that you've seen near best in slot Shadow Priests take a bite on Blood Queen Lanatel and just drop like 1 or 2 million healing. It is actually insane. Note that it only heals the people in the same group as the Shadow Priest. If you are making a raid, you might want to consider spreading the Shadow Priests out so that several groups of people can get this juicy off healing at once. And for CC we have Shackle Undead, a potential talent, Psychic Horror, we will have Psychic Scream and maybe even Silence again, it's depending on how you set up your talent tree. All of these spells have blatant weaknesses of course. Psychic Horror and Psychic Scream cannot be used on undead targets and ICC is full of those. Silence is only a soft CC and not a hard CC so it doesn't stop the, the, the flamey bony boy from VDW. And Shackle Undead can of course only be used on Undeads, so I guess kinda balances out in the end. Priests can also dispel magic, diseases and ward against fear. There are a lot of unique situations in where a Shadow Priest can thrive in 3.3.5. Think of things such as Ruby Sanctum, 25 Roy Threat Manipulation or Soaking the Spirits in the Lich King Encounter. If you find yourself without a Retribution Paladin for example, you can start casting Mind Blast while Vampiric Touch is up to grant the replenishment buff to up to 10 people in the raid. That's all I can think of for utility for now, let us dive headfirst into what is probably the most important piece of information in this guide. Skrrrra! We got tips! Boom boom! And tricks! Alright, let's start off with the tricks. First off we have Dispersion. This can be used to almost completely avoid all the damage from a nasty mechanic, such as the Synergosa's Blistering Cold or the Lich King's Remorseless Winter. Make sure that you use the Dispersion macro I showed you earlier in this guide. It will allow you to make lightning fast movement and keep up with the other DPS as you effectively ignore several big mechanics. And the most important piece of information in this guide, I have been teasing it the entire guide, but here it is. It is proper mind play timing. I don't know what to call it since I have never heard anyone give this a specific name, so I will coin it as perfect GZDs. Now importantly, you will need a lot of haste to even notice this effect and I can only show you the actual difference in time if I slow down the footage of my mind play cast, like way down. If you hit the perfect global cooldown, you should never see your Shadow Priest's hand dropping down. Whoa, stop. Before this video can continue, I have to apologize to you guys because I cannot actually record the thing that I want to show you right now because I did I, I installed a Windows update and boom, the drivers that I had were completely, completely scuffed and Jesus, nothing wanted to work and I just did a World of Warcraft raid with 30 FPS. That was freaking terrible. Anyway, I was going to show you guys a DPS comparison between my own Shadow Priest inputs and a auto clicker to show you the difference in the Mind Flay cast. If you would still like me to do that, then drop it in the comment section down below. I will surely do it if like one person says like, hey, you got to do this because you were going to do it and you just got to do it. So then I'll do it. But anyway, I'm really sorry for the inconvenience, I will get it fixed and we'll have more content. The next tip is a very simple one indeed, just melee attack, brother. By right clicking the boss you will notice that your character is melee attacking if within range. This increases your DPS ever so slightly. Fear ward can also be applied, preferably pre-pull. This way you do not waste the global cooldown and it will actually be up a lot sooner than it normally would allowing you to get a double fear immunity. Another neat little trick is this one. Call me Mr. Spooky Man. The exam! We have looked at the theoretical information. Now let us apply that in a practical environment. Environment. Why is there an end there? DBM pull 15. Do I have a flask? Check. Do I have buffs? Check. Am I in proper position? Check. DBM pull 10. What have you had? 
one shot, or one opportunity, to Beast Shadow Priest is all you've ever wanted on one encounter. Would you become top DPS, or just another bitch? Pull! Yo, his vampiric touch is ready, boss pulled, start casting already, there's the devouring plague on the boss, necessary, mind flay spaghetti, he's nervous, but steady, he on the shadow work, pain so flashily, this is the deeps, and he knows when to cast shadow fiend, he's ready, in a focus, the hocus, be going focus, the target becomes hopeless, don't give it psychosis, he stop DPS, how, this is his vow, ain't nobody joking now, this is my house, don't forget your playing, wow! As you might have noticed on some of the footage, Shadow Priest is mainly about keeping your dots up. An important thing is to never refresh your dots before they fully expire. Besides that, the rotation is fairly easy to learn and incredibly difficult to master. Remembering that your DPS doesn't just come from the damage, but also from positioning, movement and awareness of tactics. Hello? This is the outro. I personally think that Shadow Priest is a lot of fun to play, both casually and when you are trying hard. The abundance of utility is really something that I like a lot because it allows you to help each other out and whereas unlike Fury Warrior for example you cannot really turn the tides on a bad situation most of the time. On the Shadow Priest you can definitely at least help. Shadow Priests are strong for sure but they are not the strongest DPS. Fact is then I didn't put them on the top 5 DPS classes list. Like I said there, it was really hard to pick the 5th spot, and if it wasn't for the criteria being purely DPS, Shadow Priest might have made a honorable mention at the very least. You can do very well on this class, and the better that you are doing, the more off heals you give to your raid, it is an absolute win-win situation. Well that was it for the guide, I hope you have learned something, if I have yet to learn something myself, feel free to put it in the comment section down below of course, if we all pitch in and fill the voids that I left, I am sure that this guide will become better as a result. And I would just like to thank you guys for the support that I have been seeing, like... I never imagined that I would get a video to a thousand views, and like, opening up my YouTube thing and seeing that the top 5 DPS views is just like so high, like wow. Absolutely incredible, I love all the comments, I really like the fact that I'm reaching out to warming people, but also actually to a lot of people that aren't even familiar with warming. It's, it's, it's you know, you get both sides of the coin, it's really good. Anyway, thank you guys so much for the support, and that's it. Yeah, a happy, uh, happy, happy December.